Courtney Peters, Sadia Sukraj, Shanel Hoog, and Marna Engelbrecht. Horrific examples of how we are failing our children. This with Child Protection Week underway. Tons of cash and luxury vehicles, the Guptas get their assets back in a blow for the National Prosecuting Authority. This is E! News at 8. I'm Sally Bodette. Good evening. To Cape Town now for our top story, but first a warning that this news item contains disturbing details. Mortimer Saunders, the man accused of raping and murdering three-year-old Courtney Peters, has pleaded guilty to murder and necrophilia. Peter's body was found in a shallow grave near her home a week after she'd been reported missing. Reporter Leanne Jansen was in court today. Mortimer Saunders arrives to have his day in court. A man that told Courtney Peters had probably trusted with her life. Instead, he's admitted to taking it. Saunders says he poisoned the little girl because she'd woken him to watch television. He also says the girl's mother had irritated him. These details are contained in Saunders's plea explanation read out in court. In it, he says Courtney had tried to call out to those who were looking for her, but that he hit her and smothered her with a towel. Saunders joined the community in its search for Courtney, all the while she was holed up in his room. Saunders says he returned to find Courtney was dead. He then performed sexual acts on her corpse. Saunders has pleaded not guilty to premeditated murder and rape. The state refuses to accept Saunders' plea explanation, so two not guilty pleas have been recorded by the court. The state's first witness, Courtney's mother, has been called to testify. But proceedings had to be cut short after she became inconsolable. Leanne Jansen at the Western Cape High Court. To another story about the loss of young life, nine-year-old Sadia Sukraj from Shalcross died in a hijacking this morning. The little girl was in her father's car when hijackers sped off in it and then crashed into a truck when they came under fire. Desen Thathia reports from the scene. This hijacked vehicle may have been saved, but its most precious cargo is gone forever. Nine-year-old Sadia Sukraj was taken with her father's SUV when three suspects ambushed the family outside a relative's home. I heard like uh, fireworks. When I turn around, I see the vehicle coming out of the driveway, reversing out, uh, knocking the secretary's car and reversing right onto the fourth house, knocking the gate. And there were bullets flying all over and I had to run for cover. And I ran behind the tree and I sat over there. But when it all ended here, Less than a kilometer away, little Sadia had been shot and was critically injured. She later died in hospital. The hijackers had crashed into a truck and lost control while being pursued by police. One suspect was shot dead, another was arrested, and a third fled. Sadia's family remembers how she prayed for her seven-month-old sibling before leaving home that morning. She was a very spiritual child, a child that her name actually means chosen of God. And uh, she was actually wanting to get into ministry and uh, help her dad along with the ministry. Her dad is a pastor. Now, as police investigate this hijacking, the question of who killed Sadia remains crucial. Police are not giving us too many details just yet. They say they want that investigation to unfold, but hopefully it moves fast enough to give this community and the family the answers they need. Desen Tathia in Shalcross, Durban. Now to the town of Stella in the northwest province and a story that has shocked the small farming community there. Two teenage girls were found hanged in their school hostel this weekend. Today, a 19-year-old man appeared in court in connection with their deaths. Another man has been taken in for questioning. And police have yet to give any answers as to what could have motivated this crime. Mia Spies visited the school today and has the story. In this hostel with the bodies of 17-year-old Chanel Yu and 16-year-old Marna Engelbrecht were discovered by a hostel matron on Saturday morning. One of their bodies was found hanging from the rails of a staircase, the second with a string around her neck in the hostel's bathroom. 
According to information received, the two girls were alone in the female's hostel. The bodies of the pair were discovered by the hostel's matron. Yu's ex-boyfriend Zander Bailsma was arrested on Sunday. He appeared in the Freiburg Magistrates Court on Monday. The case was postponed until the 6th of August for further investigation. He will remain behind bars until then. We are really worried about what had happened and uh, we think that police did well by arresting the suspect as quick as possible and uh, we'll be uh, monitoring the situation. Pupils and staff at the school are receiving a trauma counselling. Mia Spies, Stella in the northwest. Moving to other news now and in Bloemfontein, a victory for the Gupta family this evening. They have regained control of an estimated 250 million rand in assets that were frozen. Today, Judge Philip Loebscher ruled the assets should be returned to the parties despite opposition from the National Prosecuting Authority. Now, the NPA believes the assets were likely the proceeds of crime, but Loebscher decided there was insufficient evidence before him to justify the confiscations. Erin Bates was in court. A defeat for the NPA, a victory for Gupta-linked people and companies here in the Free State High Court in Bloemfontein today. Amongst the Gupta-linked associates is Varun Gupta, nephew to the Gupta brothers, who recently arrived back in South Africa from India on Saturday after attending a religious ceremony. Also Ronika Raghavan, acting CEO of Oak Bay Investments. Judge Philip Loebscher discharged a provisional restraining order on an estimated 250 million rand in assets, among them a helicopter, several aircraft, high-end vehicles and 42 properties. While Loebscher handed the assets back to the Gupta-linked parties, he raised serious concerns about the legality of the Estina Dairy Project. It appears that Estina was to establish and manage the project with these funds, but it was also found that the processes surrounding the procurement of Estina took place in violation of chain management processes. Loebscher said the evidence before him didn't provide reasonable grounds to continue holding those assets. It's a blow for the National Prosecuting Authority, but National Spokesperson Levuyo Mfaku says this outcome has no bearing on the criminal case over Estina in August. You must never ever think that uh, the, the, the criminal case is, is weak on the basis of this judgment. The NPA is still hopeful it can regain control of that 250 million rands in assets. That's if it can secure a successful criminal conviction in the Estina dairy matter due for appearance in court in August. Aaron Bates, Bloemfontein. More news after the break and we go to KwaZulu-Natal. The latest suspected political killing in the province has many others now fearing for their lives. To KwaZulu-Natal now and another possible political killing in the province. The family of a murdered ANC member, Nkosi Kona Maklakana, says it's too early to link his murder to politics. The former branch secretary in Umzimkulu was gunned down over the weekend. Maklakana was no longer active in politics but was working in community development. Superman Lagoge reports that the murder, whether politically motivated or not, is certainly adding to the climate of fear in Umzimkulu. Despite repeated calls for an end to political killings in Guazulu Natal, the murders continue. Kosiko Namaklagana was fixing a light bulb at his home when he was shot at close range by heavily armed gunmen. He had no chance of survival and died on the scene. Despite a number of political killings in the area, the family says it's unsure of the motive behind Maklagana's killing and doesn't want to speculate. But the family wants justice. 
If no matter where Nangum wins the vote, Nangum CBs were caught. Out, out, Jenny can't do who's the ones that don't go book tea. Public representatives and politicians say they are scared to live in a hot spot of political killings. We know that and understand that it is not possible for every one of us to be secured, to be provided with the security, because we need to, to ensure that we push the service delivery. So what I can say that it is very scary to live in this region. The ANC's Herikwala regional leadership warns against jumping the gun and labeling any killing as being politically motivated. Provincial authorities say the lack of proper intelligence about political killings is worrying. The sole responsibility of the state is not to bury people, it's to protect the lives of the people. So we need to elevate our work uh, into a level whereby we'll be able to detect things before they happen and we arrest people. Police are investigating a murder case. No arrests have been made yet. Sipamandla Koke, Umzim Kuru. Let's take a quick look at news from further afield and we start in the Democratic Republic of Congo where health workers are rolling out vaccines in rural areas to battle the latest Ebola outbreak. The virus has killed at least 22 people, infecting at least 30 more. The DRC government and the World Health Organization are racing now to contain this latest outbreak. In Brussels, activists at the European Union headquarters are demanding sanctions against Israel. They laid out over 4,000 pairs of shoes, saying each pair represents a Palestinian killed in the conflict in the last decade. EU leaders are locked in talks on solving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The seven-decade-long conflict came to a head most recently, two weeks ago, when 60 Palestinians were shot by Israeli soldiers. Let's recap your main stories. Courtney Peters, Sadia Sukraj, Shanal Hoch, and Marna Engelbrecht. Horrific examples of how we are failing our children. This is Child Protection Week is underway. Tons of cash and luxury vehicles. The Guptas get their assets back in a blow for the National Prosecuting Authority. Got your weather news next, and then to end a wonderful story, the Spider-Man of Paris. A migrant from Mali gets French citizenship status after a daring and heartwarming rescue. Good evening, everyone. A moderate cold front brought wintry weather to parts of the Western Cape today, and we are expecting the system to continue bringing showers to the area overnight. But by tomorrow afternoon, it will have cleared across the region, although it is going to be a lot cooler over the Cape provinces. Showers and thunderstorms are going to spread across the high felt as well as into KwaZulu-Natal as the day goes on. Let's take a look at those temperatures in the Northern Cape, where we see it's going to be a cold day over the southern parts. Temperatures staying below 15 degrees and after a few early showers things will be clearer and drier for the afternoon. Very similar for the Western Cape and for this province temperatures stay below the 20 degree mark with only isolated showers likely in the morning. Somewhat similar conditions expected for the Eastern Cape although there are likely to be thunderstorms in this province especially in the eastern parts and we are expecting the wet weather to spread across KwaZulu-Natal as the day goes on. It's still going to be fairly warm in the northern parts where temperatures rise into the mid-20s. Some of that wet weather will also reach in Pumalanga, mostly towards late afternoon and evening, while in the low felt it's going to be a dry and warm day with temperatures climbing into the low 30s for some places. In Limpopo, a couple of isolated thunder showers could reach Tabazimbi toward evening as well, while in the northwest we'll have showers around earlier on in the day for Freiburg, and that wet weather gradually spreads across the province. Much the same into the Free State, while we are expecting it to be a significantly cooler day over this province, Bethlehem and Zastron only reaching a high of 14 degrees. And finally for Ha Ting, it will be a dry start to your Tuesday, but from late afternoon into evening, there could be isolated storms over this province, and it's also going to be quite a windy afternoon in the area.
Let's look ahead to your conditions for Wednesday when it's going to be mostly dry over South Africa, but there could be a few showers towards Bombella as well as Richards Bay. But things change on Thursday as we're going to have thunder showers for Gauteng and Pumalanga as well as parts of KZN and a strong cold front will be approaching the west coast bringing rain to the area. And finally, a Malian refugee living in France has been hailed a hero after rescuing a child hanging from the ledge of a four-storey building. Mamadou Gassama pulled himself from one balcony to another to save the four-year-old. Now, his act of heroism did not go unnoticed. French President Emmanuel Macron has honoured the 22-year-old by granting him French citizenship. Gassama has explained what made him spring into action. I saw a boy who fell from the fifth floor. I think I like children a lot. I don't want for something bad to happen to them in front of me. It would have broken my heart. I ran. I thought of ways to rescue him. Thank God I climbed up to the fifth floor and I saved him. Let's recap your top story this evening. Courtney Peters, Sadia Sukraj, Chanel Hoch, and Modna Engelbrecht. Horrific examples of how we are failing our children. This with Child Protection Week underway. And that's your news at eight. Take care. Good night. <laughs>